My name is Jay Shaughnessy. I'm a developer at Red Hat. Um, I've been working on Kiali since it started about five years ago. And I'm Nick Fox. I'm also a developer at Red Hat working on Kiali. So welcome to uh, Kiali Beyond the Graph. And today what we're going to try to do is, for new users or people that aren't familiar with Kiali, try to make sure that you leave here with an impression of what it might be able to do for you. Um, and for existing users, maybe we'll hopefully show you something that you didn't know about it, and um, you can leave here and try that out. So, what is Kiali for the people that don't want? First of all, just a show of hands, who here has used Kiali at all? Oh, that's great. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, for the people that don't know, Kiali is a project that gives you a console for Istio. Basically, you're a graphical user interface for Istio. It lets you visualize your, your traffic um, while your mesh is in operation in a graphical way. It gives you all the observability pillars you might expect using metrics, logs, and traces. And one thing that a lot of people don't know or don't utilize very much is that it's also um, a resource control mechanism for your config, right? So it's got wizards that'll allow you to create your config, create valid config. It will let you update config. And for config that you've got, it will do validation for you that can help you uh, avoid mistakes or fix them quickly. So as Jay mentioned, really the goal for this talk is to show you how you can go beyond just staring at your traffic graph. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of value in being able to just visualize your mesh, but there's more that the tool can do that can um, potentially save you time or make you more efficient when using SEO. So we've got three short demos for you. Um, and this should be a good introduction for new users that haven't used Kiali before, or if you've been using Kiali for a while, hopefully you'll learn something new that you can take away with you. So the demos that we're gonna go through are, we're, we're gonna show you um, slow uh, service that's responding slow in your mesh and how you might go about troubleshooting that. Exposing a service through ingress, so trying to get traffic from outside of your mesh to a service inside of your mesh. Applying an authorization policy and testing it first with dry run. And I'll just emphasize the goal here isn't to show you how to do each one of these things. In fact, what works well for a demo probably isn't what you want to do in production, but it's really for you to take away um, different ways that you can approach this problem with Kiali and hopefully make your day-to-day -day work with Istio a little easier. So demo time. All right. The rest of the talk really is just demo. So, yeah, so wish us luck. Yeah, live demo. <laughs> All right, so that for those of you who haven't seen it before, this is basically what your traffic graph is going to look like. And I'm going to actually reduce the shrink, shrink it just a little bit. So what we have here is our travels demo that we use a lot in Kiali. Um, we like a couple things about it. One, it's not book info, so it's a little bit different. I know, I like that. Two, um, there's the whole tutorial series on Kiali.io that's built around this. So if you're just learning Istio, this is a great way to learn Kiali and Istio, learn the features of both at the same time. So I would recommend Kiali.io and the tutorial that we have here. In short, um, briefly, there's just two main uh, namespaces in play. On the left here, you've got the travel portal, which has three regional portals for a travel reservation system, and then you've got your travel agency. The portals make requests of a central travel service, which is backed by three versions of, of the travel's workload, and then those in turn uh, make requests of the different reservation services, cars, hotels, et cetera, right? So what we can see just looking at this with all these green edges and some blue edges for TCP traffic is that it looks like our mesh is working perfectly, right? We, we don't see any, we've got no availability problems, there's no red edges, there's no orange edges here for degradation and so forth. But that doesn't necessarily give us the whole story, right? So what I'm going to do up here in our, what we call the graph find box, is I'm going to see if I've got anything running slowly. And the response time greater than 1,000 milliseconds is 
very slow with regards to the amount of response times that we're usually looking for. And we can see that in the last couple minutes, we've got a couple edges here that are running slow. In fact, four and a half seconds is, is a terrible response time, right? So what can we do with Kiali to try and figure out what's wrong? Well, there's a lot of different ways that you can try to attack the problem. One of which is, I'm gonna just select the, set, the travel service here, and on the right side, anytime you select a node on the graph, you're gonna get information on the right-hand side about it. And one of those tabs is called traces, right? So this is a trace integration that you can get with the graph. And if we take a look down the right side, each of these is an individual tr um, trace. So when you're looking at the graph as a whole, you're getting all of the traffic aggregated together, but you're not seeing what the specific request paths are. If I just go to the top one, I can see it was an 11 millisecond request, and you now get a graph overlay with this, in this purple showing you that particular trace on your overall graph. We can see that it went through the travel service, it went to the version three workload and made a hotel reservation, and it was fast. So maybe that's not a problem. We can keep looking. If I can get this out of the way, scroll down. Let's look for a slow one. Uh, might have to refresh. Just turn on some refreshing here. There's one. So here's a slow one at three seconds. We can see this one started over here in the French portal, came through the travel service, went through V3, and then made flights, hotel, and insurance reservations. Well, we're pretty sure hotels was okay. This makes us a little suspicious about flights and insurance. In general, we think this is helping us understand the problem, but it's not really doing everything we need. Let's dig in a little bit further and take a look at this from this workload, V3, um, into the detail. So Kiala gives us the ability to, dry, to drill into detail on any workload, application, or service. It gives you a mini graph that's focused on the node of interest. And then up top, it gives you a bunch of options. You can look at traffic, logs, metric charts, traces. Let's take a look at that outbound metric, right? Because we know response time is not great. So let's look for our request duration chart. And sure enough, we can see that there's one thing here that seems a little out of whack. This green line on the chart is apparently looking at the flight service. So that may actually be our problem. If we were to take away the flight service from the chart, we can see actually that all the other reservation systems seem to be behaving about the same and they're all very fast. You know, 20 milliseconds is this line right here. Another thing that you can do in Kiali in various places is we try to correlate information, right? So if you've got metric information giving you the chart, you've also got trace information. By clicking this option here, I can put traces for the same time period on top of my chart. So it's a way to correlate things. We can see that there's some traces here that, I'm gonna bring flights back. We can see that there's some traces that actually mirror um, the slow response times and a lot that are fast, which is kind of what we saw before. We were looking for a few things that were slow You can click on one of those and drill into a trace sc scatter plot. What I'm trying to emphasize here is there's a lot of different ways that you can approach the problem, right? And I'm just trying to show you, we're trying to show you different things that Kiali can do to help you out. Here you've got a bunch of different traces on the chart. The different size dots are relative span numbers. So the bigger dots have more spans, the smaller dots have less. And we can see up here that we've got some in the three second range. And you can, of course, select one and start to dig, dig into the detail. So I can see here, this, this one had it was a three second duration. You can see a lot of red. What Kiali does is it helps you try to identify spans of, or traces of interest by comparing the traces with other traces in the population. And for when you have outlier traces, you'll see more red in this heat map kind of thing. When you have things that are very common, you'll see more green in the heat map. We're trying to help you identify traces of interest.
Looking down at the span details, you can basically track things in a time ordering. And as we go down again, we see everything's fast until we get to this one, three seconds, flights again. So we're pretty sure at this point flights is the problem, but we don't know why it's a problem. So let's jump over to Envoy. If you know a lot about Envoy proxy, which I don't, <laughs> um, you can use a lot of things here to investigate. So you've got cluster information, list, listener information, route information. What I tend to do is just use this feature, which is just, let me look at the config, which we, as John showed earlier this morning, can be thousands and thousands of lines. Um, and I'm gonna do something simple, which is the usual way I approach things, which is I'm just gonna start searching for flights and see what I can find in the config, see if it helps me explain my problem. I don't see anything too much there. Looking around, I can see retry information configured, but that looks like the default. And then I see this. And this is definitely the problem, right? So what I see actually is a fixed delay of three seconds being injected 75% of the time. That explains the problem. What I've done here, right, is I had fault injection configured using Istio, and I forgot to get rid of it, and it slowed everything down, as it should. Um, if I go to the graph, it actually makes a lot of sense because if you look where the delay is, it's actually at the source proxy, right? When you have fault injection delay, it's actually happening at the source. Those requests don't actually even launch. They just stop and then they go. Which, so that kind of explains why we're seeing what we saw here. I'm going to do one last thing before I hand it over to Nick, and that is I'm going to get rid of that injection by just right clicking. We can see that there was fault injection. I'm gonna delete that and solve my problem. And eventually when this thing refreshes, that will go away, but we're not gonna wait for that. Nick. All right, so our second demo, um, we're gonna be exposing a service through Ingress and we're gonna pick this Voyages V1 service here in the travel portal namespace. Um, what you don't see yet is my ingress gateway that's running in my Istio system namespace. So I'm just going to create a couple of objects to make this happen. Um, and so you can see what I'm creating. Here you've got a gateway um, that's going to be referencing my ingress gateway. Then you've got a virtual service that references my gateway. It's got a route to my voyages service. And this is just a traffic generator that's going to be sending traffic through my ingress gateway so I don't have to keep spamming curl requests while we're doing this. So that's basically what it is. We're going to go ahead and apply this. Head back. Well, first, let's just make a curl request to see if it works. So do... I could spell and it doesn't work so what now right um, well you could start poking at this in a number of different ways but this is a demo about Kiali so we're going to go back to the Kiali graph um, you can see on here we've got ingress gateway traffic it looks like it's hitting the gateway but Maybe it's not being routed correctly. Um, you can click on this, get some more information about the request. Still doesn't tell you a whole lot. Let's go over to Istio config. And right away, you can see our Istio config has errors. So we'll click on our Voyages virtual service, which has the errors. And there's a giant red bar there and an error message telling us um, it's got an error code next to it and a message saying that our virtual service is pointing to a non-existent gateway. So that's a pretty big clue. But another way that you can get more information are these info icons. And these info icons tell you that if you click on the adjacent field, you'll get more information about that field over here in your summary panel. So I'm just gonna highlight the relevant text over here. And it says gateways and other namespaces may be referred to by namespace slash name. And it looks like we've got that backwards. So we're just gonna fix that reference. 
hit save, and now everything's green. We get a reference to our service um, popping up that we're um, referencing down there, and then our gateway reference now looks good. And you might not now be thinking, is this whole demo just about getting a reference wrong? Yes, it is, because this kind of stuff um, can be a real pain to debug. And whenever you actually find out what it is, it, it isn't even satisfying being able to find out that, oh, this whole time I just had a reference wrong. So Kiali will validate your Istio objects for you. And it helps a lot for simple things like this. Um, it won't always be this simple, obviously, but when it is, you want it to be obvious to you so that you can go in and fix the problem quickly. So let's try our curl request again. And we get back the 200 response. So yay, it's working. Okay, now if we go to our graph, zoom in a little bit. Those were the requests that were failing earlier, but now we're seeing traffic flowing through um, our ingress gate gateway to our Voyages service. So that's great. Um, the, the next demo that we're gonna show you is applying an authorization policy and testing it first with dry run. So dry run's an experimental feature, but it's pretty helpful whenever you wanna test your authorization policies. Um, and what we wanna do with this particular policy, we wanna make sure that traffic can continue coming in through our ingress gateway to our Voyages service but nothing else can communicate um, to our Voyages service. So we're gonna go and create this all in UI. We're gonna go in here and hit create authorization policy, select the namespace that we want. We'll call it something like allow from ingress, select our Voyages app, And rather than type this out, I'm just going to use the, um, the service account for my ingress gateway as my principal identity. And I have this saved in a text file. Copy that. Add that to my list. All right, let's get a preview. So this all looks fine. We're going to add our dry run annotation here. Again, spelling's hard. All right, so we've got our authorization policy created. Uh, now we want to test it. So how do you do this in dry run mode? A couple of different ways you can do that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the logs for our proxy. And in those logs, we'll see some messages that tell us whether or not our authorization policy matches and is being applied um, to the requests that you see or not. So we're going to head over to our Voyages workload, go to our Logs tab. Here you can see in the white, these are my application logs. So my actual Voyages service, that's what it's logging. In the yellow are my proxy logs. So we're just going to take away our Voyages logs. Um, the, the yellow logs that have an info icon next to them, those are Envoy access logs. So because we know that structure, we can click on those and get some more information about them. Um, it breaks things down for you um, and by field. You can get some more information about that field if you click over, if you click on the individual fields themselves. So that can be helpful. Um, but the logs that we actually want, in order to see them, we have to change the log level for our proxy. So you can do that by going over here and setting your proxy log level to debug. Hit refresh. So now we're getting a bunch more logs and changing the log level through the UI like, like this um, just gives you all of your Envoy logs. Um, which can be a lot, so we're going to filter for our back and clean those up a little bit. And this is what we're looking for here. So this tells us that our policy matched the request. Um, so at this point, we were pretty sure that our policy is working correctly. We could also test it from the inverse direction, right? We could test it. We, you could say make a curl request through um, a different pod in your namespace to see if that request got denied. 
Um, I'm not going to do that for, for time's sake. But um, the, in that case, you would look for a, a shadow denied policy or log message. But this all looks good. So we're going to go back into our ICO config and remove our drive annotation. And now the policy will actually take effect. So if nothing, if everything went according to plan, you should still see traffic flowing through your mesh. And nothing's broken, so I guess we did it right. So that was our last demo, but I think we have a little more to show you. Yeah, one last nugget, so hang in long. I'm going to say one last little thing to show, um, in case you didn't know about this in Kiali. So if you, we probably should have called this uh, Kiali the graph and beyond, because still the graph is a centerpiece to what we're doing, usually. It's where you kind of focus and start from. And if there's something that you see or, or something that happened in your graph traffic that you, were, you found of interest and you wanted to rewatch it, because instead of just watching it in real time go by, you can always go click up here and hit replay. And this is going to bring you to a basically a recorder type thing where you can literally go back and replay a graph any amount of time, anything you've got in your Prometheus stored. So if you want to look at something from last week for five minutes, compare it to this week during the same five minutes or something, you could do something like that. Um, so, you know, for our demo here today, we could easily just jump to the last 30 minutes and start replaying some of the stuff that you that you saw, basically. So if I probably, it's only been about 20 minutes, I hope. So you can see at this point, by just scrolling back, we've still got the, the four second or the slow responses from the first demo. But if we like slide forward a little bit or a lot of bit, those should have gone away when I deleted the, uh, that fault injection go further. There they go. Right. So this is just, we just wanted to throw this in to let you make sure, cause some people have actually never seen that button and have never clicked it before. Um, but it's something you can do. And if you capture the URL, it's totally bookmarkable. So you can replay it, you can share it with a colleague, you can say, hey, look what happened, you know, what's going on? And they can log in, replay it, and, and you guys can all figure it out together using all these debugging techniques. Um, all right. So that's what we got, thank you. Um, you can, of course, ask us questions, we'll be around. Uh, join us on Istio Slack in the Kiali room uh, or on GitHub, Twitter, all those things. Um, if you want to leave feedback, that's the QR code for the talk. We'd love to see that. Um, and then there's the annual user survey, if you haven't done that yet, for Istio. Thanks very much. Anybody have questions or you can always catch up? Yeah. Not on. No. Is that Mike live over there? Question, Mike. I'll tell you what. Question, Mike. You can just tell me. <laughs> so with the new ambient changes. Yes. How does Kiali work with it? Because I assume there's like one more dab. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. So the question is, what about ambient, and what's Kiali doing with ambient? Um, I can, what, what I can say about Ambient is we are actually going to the, I usually go to the weekly Ambient meeting and we are kind of tracking it as it goes, right? So one thing that you get with Ambient right now, if you're here, you know, if you're running Z-Tunnel, Z-Tunnel will generate the TCP metrics today. Um, so you can actually get a traffic graph. Um, it will show you your, your MTLS TCP level, level four graph. You won't see, you'll see all blue edges in Kiali. You won't see the green edges right now because that's going to be your HTTP. That's going to come from the waypoint. The waypoint metrics are still in flux a little bit. 
um, hasn't totally been figured out, um, but it will be there, don't worry. Um, but yeah, so, and we also, with ambient, I know, hopefully we're not running out of time, but with ambient, um, this idea of whether you have a, a service in or outside of the mesh is a little different, right? Um, so we, we used to have, we have something in Kiali today which will say, oh, you don't, you're missing your sidecar proxy. It'll show up on the graph, it shows up in a variety of places. That doesn't quite work in ambient, right? Because you want to be missing your sidecar proxies. So we have this new idea where we'll tell you if it's something's out of mesh, basically. Is it in mesh, is it out of mesh? Because the semantics are different with ambient. But it's, it's emerging, right? So, and anybody that's using Kiali with ambient, please give us any feedback that you've got. One more? Do we have time for one more? Sure. What is the, um, can you use a external tracing or metrics provider or do you have to use whatever it is? Yeah, so you can collect your metrics in, in different ways. Um, right now, Kiali supports a Jaeger uh, interface. We're basically querying for traces using Jaeger, but uh, as of, like last sprint, we're also now supporting Tempo. So if anyone's using Grafana Tempo, um, we're integrating with that as well right now too. All right, thanks folks. Oh, sorry, one more. Uh, for, uh, I'm new to Kiali. What kind of uh, like plugin or extension mechanisms does Kiali support? Uh, it doesn't, it's so, that's a good question. We get that. It, so the question is basically, how do you plug into Kiali? Um, and the answer is basically right now you don't plug into Kiali. Kiali is a devoted Istio console and we are consuming Istio metrics natively um, and things like that. And we're looking at Istio config. So if you say, I wanted to run a different um, service mesh and use Kiali, that's not gonna work, for example. Um, we are looking at maybe moving in a way that we can you know, take in some other sort of making a more generic interface for pulling metrics and so forth, but that doesn't exist yet. And that would be a total future.